Hello there. Scotland is about to lose 100% of its oil refining capability. Not good. Keir Starmer has signalled that when his Labour Party gets into power, the days of North Sea oil and gas are well and truly numbered. And this has caused Sir Jim Ratcliffe's INEOS and PetroChina to wind down their joint PetroINEOS run Grangemouth refinery by 2025, something that will put up to 500 direct jobs and an untold number of supporting jobs at risk. And the UK will be forced to import more fuel instead of using its own and keeping the money in the country. That's probably why the plan is to convert the Grangemouth refinery into a fuel import facility. Proving that we will still be relying on petrol and diesel and the like for years to come, but just not that which is made in Scotland. And the chief exec of Petro Ineos Refining said, This is the start of a journey to transform our operation from one that manufactures fuel products into a business that imports finished fuel products for onward distribution to customers. And that, dear viewer, is how the UK goes green. We stop making things and just buy it all in and then wonder why our economy is going down the tubes. But by exporting our carbon footprint and then shipping everything over, we will be less net zero than we are now. Oh, and petrol and diesel prices in Scotland will also inevitably rise in cost as a result. A signal example of export production, import poverty. We cannot run an economy based on the employment of equality and diversity officers alone. The problem for the refinery is that without enough oil coming in from the North Sea, the plant is not viable, and this refinery supplies 80% of Scotland's fuel. With STV reporting that the refinery in Falkirk is responsible for 4% of Scotland's GDP and approximately 8% of its manufacturing base. And when Grangemouth shuts down, there will only be five refineries left in the UK. Now, Grangemouth has been working on this plan for months, in the face of competition from huge foreign refineries and the rising costs of energy here in the UK. So one assumes the thought of a Labour government coming in to squash the North Sea was the final straw. But you do have to wonder if other refinery bosses are going through the same thought processes right now. And as usual, politicians are all blaming each other, when the blame lies squarely with all of them, because of their united view that net zero must come first. But, I hear you ask, haven't they got all those wonderful new green energy jobs to go to? Why is there a problem with having to look for jobs? Or is this just a case of mythical green jobs and the reality of purposefully collapsing an economy? Now, the SNP and the unions say they will be fighting to keep jobs. But businesses are there to make money, not to act as social workers or supply jobs at a loss. And because of their previous pronouncements on net zero, both the SNP and the Scottish Greens can hardly be demanding the refinery be kept open, can they? Although, as lefties, you might expect them to nationalise it, then use taxpayers' money to pay the staff to run a shutdown refinery. But isn't it strange that these politicians would rather have a facility to import petrol and diesel rather than one that makes the stuff? If the SNP and Greens were true to their claimed green credentials, they would do all they could to block the change in use of Grangemouth from producer to importer at the planning permission stage. After all, if you don't want your own North Sea oil and gas products, then why would you want anyone else's? Unless you are a full-blown hypocrite, of course. But I would think that there are plans afoot by some eco-fanatics out there to challenge a Grangemouth Fuels import facility. 
but surely the SNP drive must be to replace any hint of fossil fuel use at Grangemouth and get wind turbine and battery investors in there. I mean all those green jobs and all that. Anyway, I'm left wondering how many other big businesses are looking at the incoming Labour Party government and thinking the UK might not be a very welcoming place to do business for quite some time. Especially if they think that Labour will have to raise taxes to pay for its policies. And I bet the wealthier amongst us are shaking in their well-heeled boots, waiting to see if Labour, in the end, resorts to swinging wealth taxes to get them out of the mire. Especially as the Tory Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, revealed the details of his autumn statement today. Although most of it had been trailed for days. Don't know why they bother with these ministerial statements anymore. And the upshot of this is that while Hunt announced some tinkering around the edges with tax, the Office for Budget Responsibility said that tax in the UK will hit a post-war high of 38% by 2029. And that's without anything that Labour will feel forced to do. Richard. I am afraid I lost the will to live whilst listening to the walking anaesthetic who is our Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. Such was the pain I experienced from his delivery that I thought about taking up a, a, well, taking up a smack habit to numb the pain of his boring, monotone tones. But then I thought better of it and I thought, no, I'm not taking up a smack habit, no. Anyway, for context, this is a budget from a government that shut down and destroyed the economy. Doesn't that fill you with confidence? Yes, they shut down and destroyed the economy in 2020. And now they pretend to be on the side of businesses. So what did we get? Well, more inconsequential pre-election giveaways. But nothing that looked like it would either kickstart the economy or help small businesses in any meaningful way. Corporation tax reduction. Now that would help small businesses, but, but the Tories don't want to help those dastardly small businesses. Oh no, they want to help their friends in large multinational corporations. Yes. Don't get me wrong, the increase in the minimum wage from £10.42 to £11.44 is good news for low earners. But is this budget, is it enough to get struggling businesses back on their feet after this Government destroyed them with the endless lockdowns. No, it's not. No. And will the increase in the minimum wage put pressure on struggling small businesses who can barely afford to pay their workers now? Well, yes, I'm sure it will. Especially with the, the recent upping of corporation tax. The, the, the increases in wages could be enough to shut down many small businesses. So, excuse me for stating the obvious... But a wage increase isn't much good if you haven't got a job. And the government has pushed a budget that could result in job losses. Tinkering around with national insurance will not offset the previously vindictive corporation tax increase. Anyway, lowly peasants, what do you think about the budget and everything that Jeff's been speaking about earlier? Or do you even give a damn about the budget? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and a huge thank you to all of you lot who help, you know, help us keep going and, you know, those those of you who appreciate the work that goes into making these videos by supporting us on Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks. Were it not for you, this channel would produce a hell of a lot less videos. Links in the descriptions box below on how to help us keep going. So, God bless you all and bye for now.